So on today's adventure, we're going to a bunch of different antique stores and collectible shops hunting for cool vintage toys and comic books out in the wild. Let's go around, see what we can find today, and hopefully come home with some pretty awesome stuff. And as you see, all of these spawn books were newsstands, which was pretty cool. I also found this first appearance of the Dinobots Transformers number eight. It was in decent condition, but I already have this book in my collection. We're here at another antique store, and I spotted this box of comics, and there's actually some pretty awesome stuff in here. Let's flip through and see what we can find. First appearance of Killraven, I think. Ooh, that's a good one. What? Five bucks? All right, I think we found some deals here. I think I have that already. Cage number four. That's a good one. Ooh, there's a cool one. Sergeant Fury. Amazing Spider-Man. All right, I might have to pick a couple of these up. These Star Wars treasuries were pretty cool, but they were 50 bucks a piece. And now we're at a different antique store and they had a load of comic books. The only thing was their prices were a little bit outrageous. They actually had some really cool books here that I wouldn't mind buying for my collection, but the prices were just way above fair market value and I just couldn't justify picking up any of these books but we'll flip through we'll take a look at them as you see there's some cool stuff but take a look at the prices let me know if i'm crazy or if you think these are way overpriced as well This Black Orchid book was pretty cool. It was priced at only $8, which actually wasn't horrible, uh, but the condition was a little bit rough on that one. Uh, this detective was actually kind of cool too, but a little bit pricey at $40 in that condition.
As you see, this store had so many comics, but look at the prices. I mean, Power Warlock number six for $25. I mean, there was cool stuff, but I just wish the prices were a little bit more down to earth. Uh, this Lois Lane here, cool book, but you know, 10 bucks. I mean, that, I guess, you know, that's not horrible. Um, Web of Spider-Man for $25, the first appearance of Tombstone, uh, this unexpected book, cool cover, but for 20 bucks, I just feel like it's a little pricey. I mean, there was some really cool stuff in here, but condition was bad and prices were high. I really love this Strange Tales book with that classic Jim Steranko cover, but it was $25 and it was heavily water damaged. This next stop here was an indoor flea market and they had a store with a bunch of vintage toys and they had some pretty awesome stuff up on the wall like these Kenner alien figures, which I remember getting when I was a kid. Uh, a lot of really cool stuff up here on the wall. The Predator, um, what else? Some Simpsons, what is this? Toy Story, I mean, all different stuff. This Dick Tracy uh, mint on card was pretty cool. Some pretty nostalgic toys here. It was fun to look through. This next stop was another antique shop where I spotted this Superman pinball machine. Uh, they were having a big sale. Uh, everything was 50% off the price tag, which I think was pretty awesome, especially for this piece here. It's from 1978 from Mattel, and it included the original box. I thought this was awesome. And my last stop for the day was my favorite antique and toy shop, and they had some incredible vintage pieces. So much cool stuff here. All right, so I'm back home now, and it's time to check out today's haul from all the different stores that we visited. We went to some antique shops, some collectible stores, some toy stores. I mean, there was a lot of cool stuff to look at, and I ended up coming home with some pretty awesome items. First off, you might have seen this in the footage, I ended up buying it. Uh, it was priced at $45, but that store was having a big 50% off sale. Uh, so it would have made it like $22.50 or whatever, uh, but they actually just gave it to me for $20 even, which was awesome. So for $20, this is actually complete. It's in the original box. The box is a little rough, but overall doesn't look too bad. Uh, the graphics and everything on the pinball machine look really good. Uh, nothing's broken. All the little balls and pieces are in there. So that was really cool. I couldn't leave it there for just $20. Really happy about that one. From an antique store, I got a couple cool pieces here. I got some Masters of the Universe Hordak posters. Uh, they're like a little comic book here, little comic pages. And then you open it up. Let's see if I could do this uh, one-handed. Uh, it is the Secret of the Sword, Masters of the Universe with He-Man and She-Ra and Hordak. I mean, really, really cool. Uh, it's just like a little insert poster from one of the magazines, I think. Uh, but I think it was like 99 cents. Another one here, which I really like the poster on this one. I just had to grab them. They're in rough shape. They got some rips and tears, uh, but I think they'll look pretty cool. So there is this one here. Pretty awesome looking poster. Uh, I love the artwork on this one. Pretty awesome. And of course, Hordak and the Horde. Really, really cool character. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, like 99 cents or something like that. A dollar a piece on these. 
I also picked up some vintage Halloween decorations. Of course, it's October, spooky season is here, and I love these vintage Halloween decor. Uh, they're little, these little paper um, things that you hang on the wall or whatever. Uh, this one's really cool with the skeleton and the pumpkin, the little mushrooms. It was like two bucks, so I just grabbed them because I thought they were so cool. We got the witch with the jack-o'-lantern. I think it was like two or three dollars a piece on those, as well as the big pumpkin. It's got like a bunch of creases. It's in rough shape, but for a few bucks, I think they'll look great in my collection. Uh, also, a couple larger die-cut ones here. We have the little black kitty with the pumpkin. That one's pretty cool. And then another larger one with the cat and the pumpkin. And there's actually two of those. Pretty cool. And then these two are really awesome. This is a, I think it's like early 90s, maybe late 80s. Um, Halloween Honeycombs by Russ. Uh, it was like, I think it was 10 bucks for this thing. But it's brand new in the packaging. You got the witch. And then she's got like the little legs that come down there. So that was really cool. Uh, still sealed in the packaging. I love these vintage Halloween decorations. And then this one, I think, might be 80s or maybe early 90s. The Witch Goblin from Woolworth. Pretty cool. Just another big witch decoration. Uh, and these were like 10 bucks each, I think, for the ones that are in package. And then the ones that I got loose were just a few dollars each. And, uh, of course, we got some of those Masters of the Universe posters as well, which I'm excited about. So not too bad from that antique store. And from another antique store, there was a box of things that were all 99 cents each. And I found these, which I thought were awesome. This guy, the little frog, the witch, and this little gargoyle guy, those are all from the 1980s LJN Dungeons and Dragons line. They are super cool. I've never seen them out much. And uh, they were in a bin for 99 cents a piece. They resell for around 15 bucks or so per item. Uh, so I got four of those from the LJN Dungeons & Dragons. I also got this little guy here that is a monster in my pocket for just a buck. Then also the 1990s um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, this guy here, the Killer Bee, he's missing a bunch of his parts. But for 99 cents, uh, that this item here complete is around 100 bucks. Uh, missing all the pieces here, still probably about $20 or so for that little uh, bumblebee guy so a dollar piece on these was a killer score really excited to find some cool vintage toys and speaking of vintage toys at the one collectible toy shop i picked up this guy here i've always wanted a my pet monster i'm not really into like plush you know stuffed animal type uh, toys uh, but this guy is just really cool he's so weird looking so creepy uh, and i saw this one i just had to grab it so this one here, if you notice, has a hard face and nose. Um, normally on the regular, um, you know, American-made ones, uh, the face here is actually plush, not hard plastic. Uh, this one has the hard face, which means it is a European variant. Uh, it's also a little bit smaller. I believe it's like 12 inches, uh, maybe a little taller than that, but it's a smaller version of the regular one that was produced in the United States. This is a European version with the hard face, a smaller, I believe they call it um, the My Pet Monster Jr., possibly, something like that. Uh, but this is a pretty hard to find uh, piece right here. And I've seen these selling on eBay for around two to $300, even a little bit more, up to upwards of 350 bucks. I ended up getting him for a hundred bucks, which I thought was a really good deal. Uh, normally, uh, you find these well over a hundred bucks, uh, even for the uh, American versions, the normal versions. So really, to find really cool to find a variant, uh, you know, a foreign variant, whatever you want to call it, uh, just one that's a little bit more unique. So really happy about that. He is missing his little shackles, his handcuffs. Uh, which he's supposed to have. Maybe I'll find those on eBay and, and make him complete. But for a hundred bucks, I thought this was a really cool addition to my monster toy collection. 
And last but not least, let's get into all the comic books that I picked up. We were over at that antique store. You probably saw the footage where I was flipping through that box of books. There was a lot of Bronze Age, Marvel, a little bit of DC. Uh, I almost picked up that Luke Cage Hero for Hire book. Uh, I think it was issue number four, number five. I can't remember now, but it was uh, in really nice shape. But I think I already have that one. It was priced at 10 bucks, which is a pretty fair price. Uh, but all of these books are in pretty nice condition, and there's some pretty good keys in here. So I was excited to pull at least a couple out of that stack over at that antique shop. First off is Journey into Mystery, issue number one. I love Bronze Age horror. I am a collector of number one Bronze Age Marvel books. So this fits like two of my favorite categories. Uh, but I was really excited to pick this one up, and it was priced at only $5. I think that is an incredible deal. Uh, it's got like a couple spine ticks. It's got a little bit of color breaks on the corners. But overall, it's a really decent looking book. And for five bucks for a Journey into Mystery number one, of course, this is Journey into Mystery, the second series. Uh, of course, not the early series with Thor and all that, uh, but... These are a, a really fun Bronze Age horror run, and this is the issue number one. So for $5, I think that was incredible, and it's a really nice-looking book. Next up, we got a book that I've been wanting for quite a while. This is an awesome book. This is a pretty awesome key. Uh, this is Supernatural Thrillers, issue number five, the first appearance of The Living Mummy. Uh, this book is awesome. I mean, it's got a great cover. I love the yellow background. You got the living mummy up in uh, front and center. He's got, with a damsel in distress. I mean, such a cool looking cover. Uh, also, you know, first appearance. It's a great key. And this book in particular is in amazing shape. Um, there are no spine ticks at all. The only issues are the little color breaks at the top right corner and bottom right corner. If it wasn't for that, this would be an extremely high-grade book. Um, it had a little bit of a roll to it, but I actually pressed it as soon as I got home. And then I'm filming. This is a couple days later after I purchased this. And, uh, you know, so it was in the press, and it looks so much better. It looks perfect. I mean, this book is immaculate, besides those two little issues on the top and bottom corners. Uh, but really excited. It was priced at only $20, which I think was a pretty awesome deal. Uh, I've seen this book up over $50 or more. Uh, really, really excited. Happy that it's a nice uh, nice condition, and I've been wanting this. Now, I believe my Supernatural Thrillers run is almost complete, so really, really happy about this one. For 20 bucks, really can't complain. Awesome book there. Excited about that one. And the last book I picked up, uh, only three books that I got, so nothing too crazy, but some pretty awesome books. I think I got some great deals. Amazing Spider-Man 113. So this book also pretty high grade. Um, I mean, there's a couple spine ticks down here. Uh, the corners on these ones, there's a little bit of a color rub on that corner. But overall, nice looking book. Really cool Ramita cover uh, with Spidey and Doc Ock coming out of the uh, Spider-Man mask with the with the newspaper print. I, I just think it's a pretty cool looking cover. But this is also a pretty awesome key because it is the first appearance of Hammerhead. Uh, you know, the gangster villain. Uh, really, really cool to get a nice little ASM key. Also, it's an early book, Bronze Age, uh, 113, um, 20 cent book. Uh, and this was priced at $20 as well. I think that was a pretty fair price. Uh, I did not have this one in the collection. Uh, I don't really go and buy a lot of Spider-Man uh, unless it's like a cool key and the price is right. So I was happy to pick this one up. Honestly, this might go into my box to uh, resell uh, because, like I said, I'm not a big Spider-Man collector, but uh, I do enjoy the, the artwork and the stories, and they're, they're cool books, but uh, this one might just go for sale. But still, for 20 bucks, I think it was a pretty good deal. It looks great. It's got a cool cover, and it's the first appearance of a pretty uh, cool uh, Spider-Man villain, uh, Hammerhead. So those are all the comics that I got. 
Can't complain. Some Spidey, some Bronze Age horror, first appearance of Living Mummy. I mean, some really cool stuff here. So that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me to some cool antique shops, collectible shops, toy stores, and uh, all over the place hunting for cool stuff out in the wild. Uh, thanks for watching today. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.